I hope you agree with me when I say one of the best parts about getting a new vehicle, building a new vehicle, is contemplating sitting in the driver's seat and contemplating the many, many hours you're going to sit in this space, what it's going to look like, how it's going to work, and look forward to actually doing it. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. Right, let's start up top here. I have the uh, Department of the Interior console, the center T console, and I must say the quality is wonderful. It wasn't easy to fit. I fitted it myself and I actually, it was a bit of a wrestling match, but the reason why they've made the tolerances as, as low as they have is that now it's in, it is absolutely solid and tight. There is no movement at all, which means over rough ground, there's not gonna be any noise from it, no rattling or anything like this. And it's gonna take a bit of a beating if the vehicle's being thrown around. The access uh, from the T console I basically got access front and side and the the beauty of this mesh and elastic means that things don't fall out and uh, while you don't have a lot of space up there the convenience because up there what do you put wallet keys uh, maybe a very small first aid kit up there um, you know compact things that you will need on every single trip and they go up there and i when I gave up the troop carrier, I had that full width console. I thought, ah, you know, I'm going to miss this console because of its size. I'm not really missing it because it is actually, this is actually more versatile because I've got a center panel down the middle. I selected uh, switches and you can select the kind of lights you want. You can select what kind of light you want here. You can have the standard light or you can have their light, the Nava light. And you can also specify whether you want a radio. What I did is I put charging devices up here, charging devices there. And so um, they'll customize it for you, which was very, very nice. And is what they did for me. The lights inside, I put those in. Not really necessary, really. I was just mucking about with doing the wiring in the console before I fitted it in the car. The switches up there control the uh, Garmin Overlander. I'll get to that in a minute. And also the power units, power charging units. I will use those for charging camera batteries and other batteries up here. And I want an easy way of switching them on and switching them off. Also attached to the console, uh, well close to it anyway, is the front. I've got a 4K dash cam from Dash Cams Australia and uh, that now is uh, giving me a 4K image. So if something happens, I can use the footage in my show and it's actually quite nice to have a dash cam. I really actually quite like them. Down the A pillar, that's the, uh, the Focal uh, tweeter in the A pillar. On top of the dash, this uh, storage unit is made by a company called Caprivi, and I'm not actually sure if they're still available. It's a South African company. They were brought into Australia for a period of time, and I don't think they're still available. But anyway, if you're interested, just Google Caprivi Australia and see what you come up with. This was uh, one of the last ones that I know of, but they might somebody else might be importing them I don't know let's look now at the other console in the car also from consoles.com.au I they're so well made that they they, they look like original equipment uh, and just uh, if I had to choose between the roof console and the center console I'd take the center console first one main reason in this vehicle you really do need an armrest there is the standard vehicle comes with no armrest at all nothing on either side so there's a quite a bit of fatigue uh, that sets in after a, a few hours and the center console either comes with a built in armrest or in this case this is the uh, bushman 15 liter fridge and I have got used to and I'm spoiled by the fact that I can there you just heard it turn itself just turn itself on it's very quiet in here you do not hear that when the car is running at all it's it goes completely unnoticed it cools down very very quickly 
and I really like the idea. I have a few sips of Coke, and when I come back to it, it'll be ice cold. All right, on the front of it, the GME have uh, produced a, it's a magnetic clip for the microphone. What a good improvement. So now, if I'm driving, and I want to put the microphone down, I don't like radios up here. I don't like that hanging, hanging. I just, I just don't like that hanging. I, I, I find it, anything hanging from mirrors and things, too distracting, don't like it at all. So what they've done with this is they've made it magnetic. So now if while driving, if I want to put it down, instead of having to, you know, look, take my eyes off the road and actually look and clip the microphone in, I can do it blind without even thinking about it. And that's that's really nice. That's a big improvement on that product. And also I don't need a separate switch for it because I can turn it off and on from the microphone itself. So all of the radio controls are in one place and that I like very, very much indeed. Normally I would have the switch for the radio down here. Now when I specified the center console, I asked for a six uh, panel with six switches and I have laid them out with a USB charging socket tire pressure monitoring switch the reason for that having a separate switch for the tire pressure monitor and not having it just connected to the ignition it is connected to the ignition via that switch and the reason for it is that if you've now let your tires down and you're driving off-road those that temperature that, that, that pressure that you would have set the tire is would be below ordinary road pressures and so the warning would be going off incessantly and so i need a method of actually turning it off because a tire pressure monitoring system isn't really useful when the tires are already flat and you're driving off road because there's no danger if you do get a flat you'll know it and you'll be driving pretty slowly anyway so that's why i need a separate switch that i can turn it off Next to that is the boiler switch. Now, when I have the camper put in the back, I'm going to use the Duetto 12 volt and 220 volt water boiler. I love that system, but I want to be able to turn it on from inside the, dry, the, the seat because the, the great part about that system is that um, you, you turn it on while you're driving to, to warm up the water, and then when you arrive at your camp, the water's piping hot for a shower, but you need control inside the cab because you might be driving and say oh yes I must turn on the boiler you don't have to stop go to the camper turn it on don't want that I want to be able to turn it on from here so I've run a multi-core cable all the way from here to the back and eventually to the camper so I can control it from here exactly the same with the floodlights I might want to turn on the floodlights when I've stopped I might want to illuminate the area around me from inside the cab or from the camper so again a switch here and I will have an additional switch in the camper so I can control it from both positions as you can see my labels leave a lot to be desired they are of course temporary while I decided on the layout. Next switch is the bars. That will be for light bars. Now, the light bars that I will experiment with will be on the probably on the roof rack, and I will have a, um, a sun visor. The sun visor will stop high-level roof lights hitting the bonnet and being light being reflected back into my eyes. So once I've got to that stage, I will add the light bars. I've already run cables down, so that's ready to be connected and activated. The switch on the far right, if I push it back, that is for road running lights, that's for daytime use, and if I put it in the center position, they're off, and if I put it in the forward position, that now activates the relay, so when I now put full beam on, I will get my the Hella spotlights to come on. My preliminary tests with those Hella spotlights is they are staggeringly bright and fantastic range. Really, really good. And in fact, so good. Do I really want to add the. Well, I'll play with the light bars. Do I need them in addition to that? I don't, I don't actually think I do. This other indicator here is the Brown Davis auxiliary fuel tank and it gives me a level and above it is the switch where I select either the vehicle's main tank or the auxiliary tank above it.
Now the tire pressure monitoring system, this is a Masten system, it consists of internal sensors that I have had fitted inside the tires and I have yet to set it up. And as you can see here, I have fitted it very cleverly onto the ashtray. But there's a problem and I'm sure you can see it. I can't see it. So actually, yeah, good idea. Mm, nah, not really, actually. It's now so cluttered down there that that, that was, um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewire it. I'm going to have to run another wire up there. It's going to be a bit awkward to do. I might even have to take this down in order to do it, but I will relocate it up here. It obviously takes a signals, uh, wireless signals from the wheels, um, but I just need to get power to it. So I will probably put it up here somewhere because also when it sounds, if the sound comes from high up, I'll immediately react and I'll know what it is. If it's down here, it could be the iPad beeping at me or one something else be this, but, but I don't know. But if it's up there, I'll know that it's the tire pressure uh, warning. So I think that's going to be um, something I'm going to change actually quite soon. Let's have a look now at the navigation. I've got three navigation devices and here comes the no-brainer product. This here is by EC Off-Road. It's a nine-inch Android-based uh, what am I going to call it? An AV system, navigation system, video player, smart TV. I don't know what to call it. I looked at uh, some very nice units by Alpine, but this was under half the price. And it's a nine inch screen. And the installation is a bit unorthodox. It does sit proud. But I can tell you, while it sits proud, so from the side, it doesn't look that great from the side from here it's fantastic it's taken up all of that blank space but blocked nothing it, it, it really is nice and what's so what's very nice about it is because it's an android device i can load any maps alike i can load hema maps work on it and and i can bluetooth music player and video player and radio and lots of other things besides and in fact you can now download uh, apps from the google store i have wired it to my focal speakers i have the woofers in the doors amplifier at the back and i've got a lovely sound beautiful sound happening in here you can actually uh, if you buy a data sim card you can put it into the unit not only that you can run apps that allow you to, for example, plug in a scan gauge into the engine and actually run all your engine parameters on the screen. Now, you can't do that with the Alpine units. And I paid under a thousand dollars for this. The versatility of this thing is marvelous. So what I'm going to do with my navigation is down there is my iPad. When I was on the Canning stock route, Land Cruiser 200 we were driving in convoy with, they, they were navigating using iPad. We were navigating using the HEMA HX1, which I never particularly liked. It's not terrible, but I didn't, I, I didn't like the interface and I didn't like the software that they were using and it used to frustrate me on a number of levels. So it was never, it was never something that um, I really enjoyed using. However, I've replaced that with the Garmin Overlander. Now, having a look at, because let's face it, HEMA's maps, I, they're fantastic. The detail, their paper maps, their digital maps, I cannot fault them. Having a paper map and having a duplicate of the paper map on a screen is wonderful, better than wonderful. The Garmin map in the Garmin GPS is amazingly detailed, far more detailed than I thought it was going to be. So, I'm, I mean, I can put HEMA maps in there as well, but should I? I guess I could. I mean, I've got an account. Why don't I? But my idea is this, that I would run three mapping systems. I would run HEMA on the iPad. I would run HEMA on the EC Off-Road 9-inch screen uh, Android unit. And I would run Garmin maps on the Garmin Overlander. I've got three sets of 
Hey, that's enough to be getting on with. And I think the combination is wonderful. I like having my GPS high up. Now the Garmin is rather nice because I can unclip it. It's got the guys who designed the, the, the clamping device put in a lot of effort into the clamping. So now I have a handheld GPS and a handheld Android device. And when I put it back into the roof, it's a simple matter of plugging in the USB. You never know which way it's going to go around and snapping it back into place. Isn't that cool? I think that's fantastic. And the interface with the Garmin from my initial, my initial impressions are that it is not just good, very good. Those are my initial impressions, but the trouble is with a, with a, a unit like a, any kind of navigator, I need to take it on a trip where I'm actually testing it properly, getting blowing up the map, going wide, getting a big vision of the route that I'm taking, dropping a waypoint, finding a waypoint. Put it on just like an eating dress, parade to the right, sway to the left. In the morning everything is spent, and I make my way back home. That kind of stuff where you're actively interacting with a navigator. It's the only way of properly testing a navigator and I will be doing a, an in-depth review of the Garmin Overlander and I will be doing it later this year. So that's my navigation equipment and I think I, I'm, yeah, I'm set. I'm really, really set. So the seats are the Expert M by Recaro and they are without question the biggest investment into the interior. The covers are made by a company called Tackler. It's a South African seat cover manufacturer. I still regard the Tacklers as the best I've ever used and they had the pattern for the Expert M which fit, I think you'll agree, beautifully. Didn't particularly like the ones that were available in Australia. They were very shabby, they didn't fit particularly nicely and I didn't know them as a product so I especially imported these. My troop carrier seats, I, I kept the standard seats and they are at best okay. They're okay, nothing special and I didn't get used to them. So where am I going to sit for the next seven weeks? So the idea of the Recaro is that it has a an inflatable lumbar support. I haven't run them on a long trip but I can tell you right now that ergonomically they're wonderful I, they're, they're really really nice um, but expensive they are expensive well that then is about it uh, I uh, well the next video I'm going to be talking about the compressor the fitting of the compressor how I fit it in the back and um, some ideas on where to fit a compressor, which battery to fit a compressor, and I think it's a very interesting subject of its own. And then of course the electrical installation, we are fairly far along with the electrical installation behind me, and how I have put that all together. Those videos coming up now. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, what have you got to lose? And Patreons, you know who you are, you make this possible. Thank you for watching.